Hey everyone, I'm John, and today we're gonna to be talking about having a strategy with good strategy, bad strategy. Now, the core of a strategy works in one simple way. You have to discover the critical factors and be able to design a way to address them. A good strategy will take in all of the challenges that we have, and it will also provide us a plan of how to overcome them. The more focused we are, the more coordinated that we will be. This leads to a really powerful punch or a problem solving effect. There is, however, a bad strategy. A bad strategy is saying something as simple as, let's win. Now, the reason why this is so bad is that it doesn't really have anything specific in it. It has broad goals, broad ambitions, broad vision, and you need to have ambition for a good strategy to actually be good. Your ambition is drive to zeal and excel. Your determination is your commitment and your grit. Your innovation is the discovery of new ways of doing things. But what do all these things have in common? They're what a good strategy has. Now, within a good strategy, you have a set of coherent actions that you will take. These aren't necessarily the implementation details, but these are just actions. A strategy that doesn't have coherent actions or fails to really determine them is going to be a bad strategy. Now, a good strategy also has what's known as the kernel. And the kernel of a strategy has three main elements to it. A diagnosis, a guiding policy, and a list of coherent actions. So what does it mean to have a coherent strategy? It really just means you have one that has coordinated policies and actions. And it doesn't have to leverage the strength of a strategy. It creates one. So one of the big things about having a good strategy is the power to say no. A strategy is about as much as you're not doing as much as you are doing. You can detect a bad strategy by looking out for four main things. The first thing is fluff, and fluff is just using words and terminology to make it sound like it's a good strategy, but in reality, it's not. The second thing is that it fails to actually face the challenge head on. You have to be able to recognize and define the challenge to have a good strategy in the first place. The third thing is mistaking your goals as a strategy. You can't just have a strategy that says we need to overcome goals. You need to have a set of actions and a policy that will get you there. And the last thing is that you have a strategic objective that is defined by a leader that is a means to an end. What this means is that you have bad consequences if you don't actually succeed. One thing to know about bad strategy though is that bad strategy is actually failing. You could potentially have no strategy and you would not necessarily be failing. Or you could have a good strategy where you can actually be succeeding. So don't mix up bad strategy with having no strategy. So let's talk just about strategy for a second. A strategy is a way through a difficulty. It's an approach to overcoming an obstacle. It's your response to a challenge. Now, if none of these things are defined, there's no way to have a strategy. If you don't know what the difficulty is, there's no strategy. If you don't know what the obstacle is, there's no strategy. And if you don't know what the challenge is, there's also no strategy. So in cases like this, it's impossible to have a good strategy, a bad strategy, or even any strategy. So what this means is that you have to identify the obstacles in your strategy. Otherwise, these are just goals, laundry list items, or things that you wish could happen. But having a good strategy is going to take you places. In fact, many people actually quit right when they're about to hit success. And a good strategy works by focusing all of your energy and resources on just a few objectives so that you can achieve more in less time. And having a good strategy is going to give you at least one potential way that you can achieve success. You have to get rid of the idea that you are underperforming on your strategy. That just means you have a bad strategy. And bad strategy rises because we're not using analysis, logic, reason, just to make a good choice. Many of the times that we have a bad strategy is that we actually are just avoiding the difficulties and challenge that we have to face on. This is really just the unwillingness to choose. A strategy by definition involves focus and choice. All choice means is that you set your objectives to a few things at a time. And the essential difficulty in creating a strategy is purely on choice. It's not necessarily if you made a good or a bad decision, but it's rather that you made a choice in the first place. And your strategy is really a balance of figuring out what has purpose and what can be achieved. And when you're coming up with a strategy, you first have these big aha moments where you know exactly how you're going to do it. This is the idea that if you have an intention in your head for long enough, 
it'll eventually come true. This is because you get extremely clear of what you need to do. And then you have this process of refining that to actionable steps. So while you broadcasted that intention, you actually are processing it, making a strategy, and then acting upon that strategy. So you have to keep your mind open and especially open to all possibilities. Now, if there's one thing I want you to take away from this video, it's the kernel of a strategy. The first element is that diagnosis that we talked about earlier. This will define or explain the nature of the challenge at hand. A good diagnosis will actually simplify the complexities into simple terms. You then have the guiding policy, which is how are you going to handle the challenge? This is your approach to overcome all of the obstacles. And last but not least, you have your set of coherent actions, and these are going to be the actions that carry out your guiding policy. A great deal of your strategy work is just figuring out what is going on. Sometimes we just have to take a step back and just comprehend the situation. So this is where we can really use a diagnosis to help us further explain what really is going on. And a good guiding policy is the idea of having a good system. Your system will have inputs, which are your coherent actions, and you'll also have outputs, which is what actually happens in terms of outcomes. So let's jump back a little bit because good strategy isn't just the what, it's also the why and the how. We must always know why our strategy is our strategy. We also need to know the how, which is how is it actually going to help us? Because strategy is all about action. It's really about just doing something. And your kernel of strategy requires action. And that's because your strategy has power to it and it will use that power to put in a direction of where it will be most effective. And this leads to a cascading effect of favorable outcomes for yourself. What this really should be called is power leverage. Now, one metaphor that you can use for strategy is the idea of planning and planting a garden. Now, this is way more interesting than actually taking care of a garden. And for how stimulating it is to be weeding and watering your garden, it's actually more fun to be planting what you're going to be putting into the garden but you need to have planning and action in order to have a strategy. Without a plan, you have a goal. Without action, you have a thought. You can build good strategies by building upon your functional knowledge. This is when you figure out what works, why it works, how it works, and you can learn a lot of lessons from the past. What worked in the past? What didn't work in the past? But you should really be thinking about strategy as your personal hypothesis. It's not a crazy theory, it's just an educated guess. And the more educated that you are, the better your strategy will be. Because you do have knowledge to have a good strategy. You aren't necessarily working with anything new. You have a prediction of how the world works or how your strategy will work. And you have a good estimation of if your strategy will be successful or not. One thing you can do is make a list of 10 things that you can do that are very important and then start with number one. Lists ultimately help us decide. So being able to take off the cognitive burden and just write down a list can be super helpful. We do have to be mindful that when we make our lists, we're talking about things that we can do now, not things we've done in the past or things we can do in the future. We have to be able to take our concerns and put them to action. Having the mental tools that we talked about in this video, such as a diagnosis, a guiding policy, and a set of coherent actions, will help you with your strategies. Just by using these three elements, you're going to have higher quality strategies. It's going to help you destroy your old strategies. And I mean that in the best way possible. It's going to show the faults. It's going to show the weaknesses. It's going to show the gaps. And this is great because strategy needs to be created and it also needs to be destroyed. Although destroying our own strategies is a hard thing to do, it's necessary. Not only does it help us become better strategists, it also helps us to make good choices. So don't forget about your kernel of strategy. It's the most important thing that you take away from this video. And that was having a strategy with good strategy, bad strategy. We'll see you next week. Take care.